वेलकम बैक टू टेकी ब्लॉग आई एम प्रतीक शर्मा इन दिस वीडियो आई विल टेक यू थ्रू अ वेरिएंट ऑफ एन पाई चार्ट एनिमेशन विल कॉल दिस गैप पाई चार्ट यू कैन नोटिस द डिफरेंसेस बिटवीन दीज टू एनिमेशंस फ्रॉम दिस वीडियो यू विल हैव थ्री की टेक अवेज एडिंग जनरलाइजेशन सो इन माई लास्ट वीडियो आई एक्सप्लेन वर्बली अबाउट हाउ यू कैन जनरलाइज द नंबर ऑफ सेक्शंस बट नेवर इम्प्लीमेंटेड इट बट इन दिस वीडियो इट्स इंपॉर्टेंट टू इंट्रोड्यूस जनरलाइजेशन This will not only enable us to add gaps, but also help in generalizing the pie chart for n number of sections. Second will be dynamic start angle with n pi. The first one has all the arcs starting at the same time from top center position, that is minus ninety degrees. But for the second pie chart, the start position is different for every arc. The second arc always start from where the first one left off. and this goes on for next arc animation with the above changes we will achieve the pie chart where all arcs start together but what if we want to make it sequential the second arc will start when the first arc finishes and so on isn't it exciting i am thrilled to see your responses when you also learn this so let's jump to the code before i start i would urge you to subscribe the channel and leave feedbacks in the comment section This is a free channel and I'm happy to see you watching this video. We together have to reach many more developers like you to keep this channel growing. We have to get 100k subs as soon as possible for this channel and it's not possible without you. So if this video helps you in any way or other, share this with your friends, colleagues or in community so I can bring more such videos. Updating and by chart. Let's first make our existing and by chart more generic. First, remove the child of animated builder because now we won't know about number of sections so we cannot assume anything next remove the win draw and loss attributes everywhere we will remove it from the widget attributes also remove it where we where these are used remove from painter as well and finally remove from the screen as well now let's create a data set we'll hold the pie data in a data class with the label and value because we may not necessarily have int type always as in the case of wins draws or losses and the data set will be list of these data objects this data set can now be passed to the n by chart widget now let's solve the errors finding total now we can't blindly add wins draws or losses we need to add values of each data object so use fold operator for that now we need to create a list of twins and remove these individual twins what defines an arc the sweep angle and its colors wouldn't it be nice to create a arc data class that will hold these values and also color of arc together with this add animation type as well this will be the animation of sweep angle now we will create a list of arc data use map operator and return arc data we will define color in a moment but before that let's copy a twin animation and give it item dot value let's declare a pie colors list now come back to the map and use color for index but we don't know about index so how do you get index while using map well let's use indexed operator on the data set this will now return a record which will be having first element as index and second as our data so we will destructure it now okay so far we are able to create animation twins for each element in the data set but there is one last thing left for this step we haven't given dynamic sweep angles if you remember the draw arc sweep angle consisted of win and draw both and loss sweep angle consisted of win draw and lo loss so it's a cumulative amount of sweep angles that we need to give here because the animation demands it since all the arcs start the animation simultaneously now take a variable current sum and give it zero in the map update this current sum with data dot value and use it as end value instead of data dot value now we can remove the three twins that we define individually and now let's update the painter to take this list of arc data 
instead of three individual twins. In the painter, we can now create list of paints as well. Since paint will not change, we can keep it outside the paint function. Create a getter and run map on arc. Give the color from arc instead of hard coded. Delete the individual paints. Now we can also remove three individual draw arc functions and use indexed map again on arcs to call n number of draw arc functions. Let's use this to verify how the n pie chart behaves before moving to gap pie chart. Oh, we see only one color, and that is because the last color in the pie colors is orange. And because its sweep angle is full circle, it has overlapped on all the other arcs. And this is bound to happen. And that's why color in this type of pie chart plays a very important role. As you move up the Z layer, the colors should have opacity so that underneath colors are visible. So I will now change colors to black palette. Now on rerunning, we see all the arcs. So that's how you can make a generic pie chart with any number of sections. Now let's move to make gap pie chart. Let's make a copy of this chart. We'll modify this widget to get a pie chart that has gaps between every section. This gap will be in degrees. So this is a copy of n pie chart. Let's rename it to gap pie chart. We should allow users of this pie chart to give the gap that they want. So put a field gap degrees. I also created a screen that will host this widget. Gap pie chart screen. Yep, this is bound to happen as we change the colors. Now you can see that gap pie chart has rounded corners. So go to painter and change the stroke cap to round. As I said before, that the sections can have different colors because they don't overlap. So this means that they can have a variable start angle also. So definitely we need to, to add a start angle field to our arc data. And now you have got error that arc data requires start angle. So let's give it. And just before that, now we need to find cumulative sweep angle. So change this to data.value. But now current sum should be used as start angle. You need to add minus 90 to this because the pie chart always starts from top center. Good. You can see the overlap, but start angle is not different. So use this in the painter as well. Otherwise there is no use of calculating the start angle. Okay. This is weird. Well, a small mistake and you can mess this up. I deliberately did this. We should be storing start angle before updating the current sum. Because when you run for first iteration, it should be zero. And for the second and further sections, it should be the end where previous one ended. So let's add gaps and everything will fall in place. When you introduce gaps, the overall degrees have to be compromised. Let's say gap is of 10 degrees and four sections will have four gaps. So we have remaining degrees as 320. Now our total will be equivalent to this 320 instead of 360 compared to previous pie chart. Let's do that in the code. You will get total gap degrees by multiplying number of sections with each gap degree. Use this remaining gap degree instead of 360 now. There is very slight difference, but definitely the arcs length has decreased. Now, because there is gap, we need to consider adding this gap to our start angles as well. Better, but we cannot add fixed gap degrees to start angle. It will be dynamic. We need to also see how many sections are there before a particular section. And for that, we need index. So let's say for first arc, you will have 10 degrees added as the gap. But for second, you need 20 degrees added because for every arc, we start calculating from top center. There is not much change. Actually, I made a mistake. While changing the end value of sweep angle, I didn't use total to get current sum. Now let's use it. And now many things look in place. 
you will wonder why is this important so that was a huge mistake to make our current sum was not in degrees it was a real value that the data set had i am bringing back the change of using index to calculate current sum perfect the gaps are in place so this is one type of animation which you can use where all the arcs start at the same time and they start from a different position now let's make it sequential so after first arc finishes animating the second arc will start and so on we need to introduce intervals when you have four sections the first arc will complete in first 25% of the whole animation duration the second will animate in the second 25% of the duration and so on so let's first find this value in code let's add curved animation the intervals start will be index times interval gap and end will be one more than the index times interval gap let's dry run this for four sections the interval gap is 0.25 first arc will have begin as 0.0 and end as 0.25 second arc will have begin as 0.25 and end as 0.5 third arc will have begin as 0.5 and end as 0.75 and last will be having 0.75 as begin and one as end perfect and what happens for three arcs the interval gap will be 0.33 first arc will have begin as 0.0 and end as 0.33 second arc will have begin as 0.33 and end as 0.66 third arc will have begin as 0.66 and end as 0.99 don't worry about 0.99 it's for understanding in actual controller will narrow it down to very less time now let's run the application nice let's change the duration as well keep it either hard coded or if you want to give equal amount of time for each arc to draw then give it 1 second multiplied to length of data set Now let's also change our data set to see how it works with one more data. Add a color, add a new data to data set and rerun the application. Well, you can give dynamic interval gap, but that is for another video. And that is it from this one. Did you like it? Then hit the like button so that I can bring more such tutorials. Also, let me know in the comment section if there are any improvements needed in this chart. And of course, don't forget to subscribe the channel. Your one subscription will mean a lot to me and will help channel grow and reach its target of 100k subs. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.